Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today I am starting something a little bit different and we're gonna try this out and see how it goes. Normally at the end of the month I do a book haul and there has just been less interest in those book haul videos and I wanted to try something different. They're not the most interesting videos for me to make honestly and so if less people are interested in them maybe we, we do something else. So let me know your thoughts on the video that I'm about to do and if you think it's something we should keep up with we'll see how this goes. Today's video is going to be a vlog style video focusing specifically on publisher mail and pre-orders. So instead of showing you all of the books that I acquire throughout the month I'm mostly going to be focusing on things that are new and upcoming releases. My hope with this is that it becomes less about what books I'm acquiring or buying and more about what are some things on my radar, what are some things that you might want to maybe purchase, maybe order from your library, maybe follow reviews for as an alternative to like a anticipated reads type video. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this something you like? Is this something you'd like to see more of? I just open a box from a publisher for a vlog. So I'm just going to insert that clip here and I will be back when I have more publisher mail or pre-orders that come in to share with you. Again, let me know your thoughts on the format and this change. Is this something you like or not? Talk to me in the comments down below. I don't have any idea what this is. It is a box from Entangled Publishing, so it's a romance, and it has these laugh stickers on it, so I'm guessing it's a comedy? <laughs> I have no idea what this is, so let's see. It's it so hard to open. Oh my gosh. Okay. Moment of truth. Oh. Paper. <laughs> She's cute. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a little pouch that says, pretty fly for a cacti. It is for The Gunslinger's Guide to Avoiding Matrimony. I am actually reading the first book in this series right now that they sent to me like a year ago. I, I've got to say, I think the move to the cute cacti pouch was a better choice than last time they sent an actual live cactus in the package, which I wasn't expecting, and it poked my finger. It was fine. No big deal. But uh, yeah, good good move to have not real cacti for, for, this, for this PR package. Messy marriage mix-up. It's like a, you know, Western romantic comedy. Thank you, Entangled. Let's open my book of the month box. It's so weird to be opening this so early in the month, even though that's when I get it, because I usually film these at the end of the month. But I did want to show you all what I'm getting. I always think it's fun to see what other people pick, and I know there are people who are, are curious to see what I get. This month I had a main pick and an add-on. My main pick was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I've not read from Gabrielle Zevin before, but this sounded really interesting. It sounded like something I would enjoy. It says it's from the author of The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, which is on my TBR, but I haven't actually read it yet, but I've heard good things. This is about two friends, often in love but never lovers, who come together as creative partners in the world of video game design. And as somebody who likes geek culture and like the idea of reading something about video game design, that appealed to me and early reviews look good. So this was my pick for the month. And then as an add-on, I had to grab The It Girl by Ruth Ware. I kind of hate this cover if I'm being honest. However, I love Ruth Ware's books. I really enjoy her writing. I know she's not everybody's cup of tea, but I have never had a bad time reading one of her books. There are a couple of her earlier books that I just haven't read yet, but everything I have read I've enjoyed, and uh, so I want to read this one. I've heard people compare it to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which I actually didn't like as much as most people, but I'm hoping that Ruth Ware tackling something similar might be more enjoyable for me just because I like her writing. So. Those were my picks. If you are interested in book of the month, I do always have a link down below. If you sign up, I get a free book, which is nice, but you don't have to. It's like 16 bucks a month, including shipping. One cool thing about this too, is it's also one of the audio influencer picks for Libra FM, which is nice when that happens. I've got book mail to open and uh, most of it is from Harlequin. The top one is also romance. So let's check out all my romance mail. They sent them all in separate boxes, which is a little bit of a waste of packaging, but uh, 
it's all right, we've got some fun stuff to share. Harlequin is really great. They send me books for promotion on Instagram. First up is a finished copy of a book I've heard great things about. This is After Hours on Milagro Street by Angelina M. Lopez. Love the cover, it's stunning. I've heard it's really good. It is a professor, a poor handsome man, standing in the way of Alejandra Alex Torres turning Loretta's, her grandmother's bar, into a viable business. The hot brainiac who sleeps in one of the upstairs tenant rooms already has all her Mexican-American family's admiration. She won't let him have the bar and building she needs to resurrect her career too. But of course, they're gonna fall for each other. Love this cover. I've heard really good things about this. Thank you so much to Harlequin. Box number two. We've got a historical category romance, Compromised into a Scandalous Marriage by Lydia San Andres. Uh, we've got some Afro-Latin characters. From Island Scandal to Dutiful Vows, when heiress Paulina Despradel is banished from the family Quinta in a storm, she seeks shelter with her dashing new neighbor, Sebastian Linares. Their attraction may be as electrifying as the lightning outside, but the night they spend together is totally innocent. Barely more than strangers, they must now marry. But left alone with their simmering chemistry, can they build a true union from the ashes of a scandal? Ooh. Love. Box three. We have The Nanny Game by Zuri Day stunning cover. This is part of the Harlequin Desire line. She'll solve his nanny problem and maybe his playboy problem too. When a casual weekend romp ends with an unexpected baby on his doorstep, CEO Desmond Eddington needs Ivy Campbell's nanny help pronto. Ivy dotes on the precious little girl. Her powerful playboy single father? Not so much. Sounds great. Love the cover. Lastly from Harlequin, Rivalry at Play by Nadine Gonzalez. Again, beautiful. It's your move, go ahead and finish me. Attorney Alexandra Lattimore doesn't play games, but entrepreneur Jackson Strom brings out her competitive side. Her former high school rival is all grown up, oozing class, challenging her and tempting her in equal measure. But she is back home to deal with family business, not to revisit the past or get tangled up in messy emotions. Is a casual fling the best strategy? Maybe. Thank you so much to Harlequin. I will be taking photos of these for Instagram. And if you are a romance reader and any of those sound up your alley, go check them out. Final package is from Hachette. And this is, yes, a finished copy of Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley, which I have already read and enjoyed. This is the next book in the Wild Winchester series. And it follows our hero who is a total nerd and is kind of a spy master sort of person who is obsessed with royalty and the heroine who he initially thinks is a princess but it turns out that she is the handmaiden of a princess trying to prove that she can become a royal guard trying to escape her brothers trying to prove herself and they end up helping each other and uh it's it's a lot of fun. It's very rompy. So thank you so much to Hachette and Forever Romance. Hello. So probably if you've seen my other videos, you've already heard this, but any not so fun twist of fate after avoiding it for over two years, our entire family got COVID. So I am finally recovering from it. This is the first day I've put makeup on in a while. I'm still tired, not totally recovered, but feeling much better enough to do a clip and show you <laughs> the book packages that have come in the mail while I've been sick. We have one from Macmillan, which is very exciting. It is a finished copy of one of my favorite books of the year, A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. Huge thanks to Tor.com. I did have an art copy and they very kindly sent me a finished copy. I absolutely loved this. It is like a hug and a therapy session. It is soft, cozy, sci-fi. And the second book in a duology, I just, oh my god, I love it so much. So if you need something sweet and cozy and happy and like, it, this is this is so the thing. But it is grounded on some harder sci-fi. It's set in a sort of post, post-apocalyptic future where there's been a climate kind of apocalypse. Humanity has relearned how to live with the earth. 
and there's a tea monk and a robot and I'm getting out of breath talking so when I try to film my wrap up we'll see how this goes um, with the COVID thing but uh, thank you so much to Tor.com for the finished copy. I had two packages come in from Barnes & Noble one of these is a pre-order one of these is another book that I ordered I'm not sure which is which so let's find out. Okay, this is not the proof. I bought this because I'm doing another video where I was listening to this and I just needed my own copy. This is Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. It is nonfiction and it is gorgeous. Like the writing is amazing and like this physical copy is beautiful and it's illustrated and I just was like, okay, I want, I want a hardcover copy of this for myself and I'm very pleased to have it. So then this should be my pre-order. Yes, it is What Souls Are Made Of by Tasha Suri, which I was lucky enough to get an early audio copy from NetGalley, so I have already read this. I really loved it. I gave it four stars. Not my favorite book from Tasha Suri, but I really like what she did remixing Wuthering Heights. This is her first book for a YA audience. And like, look how pretty. Oh my gosh, I just, and I, I, I love the cover. I'm so happy to have this. In this version, Heathcliff is South Asian, he's Indian, and I just, I really like what she did here. It took me a while to get into it. Like, it was a little slow going, the first part of the book. It was so good. And definitely read the author's note. I think she talks about the liberties that she takes with the original and why, and I think it's really smart. So I loved it. Some good book mail worth worth hopefully feeling better about. Another package arrived, this time from Quirk Books, and I would unbox it for you, but one of my children already did it, so I'm just gonna show you the book. They sent along a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. This is a children's adaptation of the film, which I thought sounded fun. And I was like, oh, this could be a cute way to share this with my kids. And then I thought, yeah, except then my kids are gonna think it's a great idea and really funny to like pretend to be sick to stay home from school. Like they could do this. Uh, I, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll read it. Maybe, maybe it'll be fine. What's fun is they sent it along with some goodies. So we have some cute little stickers and some activity sheets to go along with the book. I probably will read it to them. I'm just like bracing myself for the fact that um, they're probably then gonna think it's hilarious to do this at some point, but it is pretty cute. Oh jeez, it's like an illustrated picture book version of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So thank you so much to Quirk Books. Hi again, I just got back home and had some packages in the mail, so I thought I would open them with you. First we have something from Macmillan. I don't know what it is. It feels like a picture book. So let's find out. Oh, cute. I did not know I was getting this, but this looks adorable. Granny's Kitchen by Sade Smith. How cute is that? Did I know I was getting this? Shelly Ann lives with her grandmother on the beautiful island of Jamaica where the sun is always shining and the weather is sweet. One afternoon, Shelly Ann becomes hungry, so she asks Granny for something to eat. Granny tells her, gal, you bet I can cook, and teaches Shelly Ann how to cook delicious Jamaican food, but everything goes wrong. This sounds really cute. Oh my gosh, and look at these illustrations, they're beautiful. How fun. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be reading this with my kids. Thank you so much to Macmillan. I didn't know they were sending this along, but that's very adorable. And I love the illustrations. Awesome. And then I have a couple of packages. I'm not 100% sure what's in them. I have this one. I, I don't wanna show the address, so I'm gonna open it this way. I don't know if it's actually a book, so I'll cut this out if it's not, but. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is partly a book. I had some points from my Amazon affiliate money and I decided to buy myself a finished copy of maybe my favorite book of the year so far, Siren Queen by Nevo. I have an advanced copy, but I've been wanting a finished copy and um, yay, now I have one. I love this so much. I mean, this is easily in my top couple of books that I've read this year. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I am such a fan of Nevo's writing. And in case you're curious what else was in the package, it is a kickboard for one of my children who is learning how to swim. So glad that arrived, he'll be excited about that. Hello, I'm back with some exciting mail. First up is something that came to my PO box. I think I know what this is. An author reached out to me about reviewing her book, an indie author, and she said she was gonna send it to the PO box. So let's see if I'm right. Yes. So, and actually, I don't know if this author 
is a she. I'm not 100% sure the author is a she, but I think I'm right. I, it, it is entirely possible that I'm wrong. But thank you so much to Halo Scott for sending The Heartbeat of a Million Dreams. I am very choosy about the indie books that I accept for review, but this one sounded really interesting. So she pitched it as a science fantasy novella with a sapphic romance and a neurodivergent main character, but it's like on the darker side. And it just sounded really interesting. So I was like, yeah, send it along. Not sure I'll be able to get to it till September, but I will definitely be reading it by then. Mars has a shadow, a mirror world torn from the chaos of an eons old rivalry between gods and titans. An elite few protect the secret to preserve the peace. But when a girl comes along with the power to reunite Mars, worlds collide in a cosmic war. Slade Hawk is a monster. That's what they tell her at least. Hunted since birth, she's lived her life in dumpsters, subways, and in between places. She is one of the evolved humans, a star child who can shift between matter and energy at will, though her power stretches farther and reaches darker. Earth fears her people and exiles them to Mars. They want her dead, want Mars to burn, and fear can shape fate. Slade must overcome horrific odds to conquer Earth's cruelty and free Mars from war. So it sounds really interesting. It's kind of a creepy cover. I think this author's other books are much darker than this one, but uh, this one did sound interesting. So thank you so much to Halo. And then something arrived in the mail. This is from a Kickstarter that I supported as a splurge birthday present to myself back when it was my birthday i ordered one of four possible quarterly boxes it, it was a little pricey so i only did one but oh my gosh so this is the outer thing this box is also enormous lucy eden who is a fantastic indie romance author put together this thing where they were doing special exclusive editions of books by romance authors with exclusive covers as well as some fun goodies like to pamper yourself and so I was like yes this sounds amazing and I got the summer box there were like four season boxes you could get I just got the summer one it was I mean it was expensive so I couldn't get all of them but um I am so excited I'm going to show you the outside of the box on here and then I think what I'm going to do is actually film the unboxing on my phone because I want to be able to upload it to social media and then I will just also insert that video here but um okay like this thing is enormous what a pretty box wow oh my gosh look at this thing this is wild love notes from paradise book box summer 2022 the box is so pretty and it's got all these animals with books on it. I am so excited to open this. You will now see footage filmed on my phone. My birthday was a few months ago and as a splurge present to myself, I supported a Kickstarter. And this book box came and it's enormous and I'm so excited to open it. Please appreciate this gorgeous box. This is the Love Notes from Paradise book box for summer 2022, created by indie romance author Lucy Eden. It's got, I know, exclusive editions of uh, books by romance author. I could not afford more than one season, but oh my God, I'm so, so excited. We have the envelope to begin. I'm so excited. Codes on the back to download ebooks, adorable postcards, cute stickers, and a bookmarks are for quitters <laughs> bookmark. So far, this packaging is excellent. So cute. See what we've got. There's a booklet guide. This adorable zippered pouch from Hello Lovely Box. Two headband and scrunchie sets from Fable Bands, who I love. I get most of my headbands from Fable Bands, and it's the same as the print on the box. Stickers and bookmarks from Sexy Fashion. I'm hiding the ones that are NSFW. Handle, whipped body butter, a bath bomb. Interesting, I've never tried these. A pop-up sponge, toilet bombs, and foaming toilet powder, lavender and lemon. Adorable coffee mug, pin, keychain, and pen. And finally, Booty Call by Ainsley Booth. The Thelanian Dynasty by Katie Robert, volumes one, two, and three. Heart and Hand by Rebel Carter and Office Hours by Katrina Jackson. All exclusive covers, 
and additions to the box. Okay, this box was so epic. I am excited to use everything in it. Hey everyone. So I know I said that this video wasn't just gonna be about random books that I buy, but I did wanna share because I got to meet up with Jashana and Ingrid today. They were visiting New York City and we did some book shopping together and it was really fun and I picked up a couple of things and just, just thought I would put it on here, especially because one of these books is something that I know some of y'all have been wanting me to read and I've been hearing a lot of buzz about. That book is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This is the first book in the Dandelion Dynasty series, which just finished and I have heard amazing things. I've had a lot of people say they think I should read it, so I got book one. We also went to a Barnes & Noble and I picked up a couple things with their buy one get one 50% off sale. I got The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin and a book that I read an e-arc of and really liked and loved the cover and have been wanting uh, and it's in paperback now. So I got Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, which is a YA kind of horror with like a culty sort of thing. So there you go. Three books I picked up book shopping. Here's a picture of us together. We had a really great time hanging out and uh, I will link their channels down below if you want to go check them out. And that is going to be the end of this vlog style haul for July. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the format. Let me know if this is something you'd like to see me continue or if you have other things you'd prefer. Um, yeah, I'm just curious to see thoughts on this let me know. If you like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next. Not hit my nose <laughs> and I'll see you next time.